expectation going into the five days and what kind of Yeah, look, we wanted to compete. We know India are a good side. Um, but once again, one really bad session with the bat has, has destroyed our chance in the test match. Look, I suppose 400 is a good score, but it's it's manageable in 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 Chittagong. There's no way we should be bowled out for 150 in the first innings, and and that's what's lost us the game. So some some really poor decision making with the batters, and that's the most disappointing thing for me. This has been happening for a long time. This part of cricket, which is that is very nice. Can you point out anything anywhere? Look, this. There's obviously a lack of confidence in the top order, there's no doubt about that. Um, the young player who hasn't played test matches with us and is confident at the moment has come in and, and shown us how to do it and, and played really well. Um, he's obviously come into the test match confident from his A side and, and domestic performances and, and the rest of the guys, confidence is just pretty low at the moment and um, not managing to find a way to get out of that slump. Um, there's a whole host of players in the top five or top six that um, haven't played as well as I'd have hoped and been as consistent as I'd hoped and that's disappointing. Last one for me, can you explain Mount Yeah, he's, he's, exclusion. his exclusion. exclusion. Look, it's, it's, it's based pretty much on the fact that domestically and for the A side, he hasn't really got a lot of runs of late um, and hasn't played international cricket for close to five or six months now, I suppose and hasn't got the number of runs that we would have hoped for domestically and for the A-side and that's probably why. It was a no-brainer to pick um, Zakir because he's confident in coming into some form and um, and that's the reason he, he missed out. Uh, yes, sir, Rabbi, you saw that it, that it had never changed with him. So, obviously, it's just for some certain reason, but what was the process? I mean, he didn't bat at the top for, for, for a while. We, we, we had to mix up the batting order simply because um, there was no one else really to bat number three. But we wanted to get a right-hander into the top order. Um, he's a guy that did well in a couple of test matches when he played. He played the last test match, I think he played in, was it, uh, did he play in New Zealand? The New Zealand series and got some runs, so then got injured. So. He looks to score and looks to play nice and positive. And that's the reason we got him up at number three. We couldn't bet Sakib three. We couldn't bet Mushfik fee three. We couldn't bet um, Litton three. Um, we couldn't bet Showan three. But we wanted to give him an opportunity. And if there's a good place to bet up the order, it would be in Chittagong. Because it's a good wicket. Probably the best time to bet against the new ball because you can score. Um, so that's the main reason we got him in at number three. And what's the good scenario with Sakib? I mean was he full fit there? He could play as a batter. Obviously, he didn't bowl enough overs because he's still struggling with his with his shoulder and with his bruising, which is obviously a, a big blow for us because it leaves us with four bowlers and then one bowler breaks down, Everdot breaks down, then you're stuck with three bowlers. So it's a very difficult side balancing at the moment because our batting order is not confident, our top order. Um, but we've also got bowlers who can't bat. So 9, 10, 11... Um, and not their, not their fault because they're not there to bat, but at least just a little bit vulnerable with only playing four bowlers. Thanks, Sam. Uh, coach, few questions. Firstly, uh, is Shakib available for the second test as a full? Uh, I'm not 100 sure about whether he'll be able to bowl it. Um, he's definitely available to play as a batter, uh, which is a, which is a, obviously a, an issue for us because he's an all-rounder. You need an all-rounder. So at the moment, he'll need to be assessed in the next day or two, but at the moment, fit to play as a batter. So you are willing uh, that he plays as a backer? <laughs> he's got one of our best records. He got 80 in the second innings, um, and he's the captain of the side. So whether, he, like I say, all rounders. Whether if you're an all rounder, you get picked in the team. If you're not bowling well, you're still worth your money with a bat. If you're not batting well, you're still worth your money with a ball, and he's worth his money with a bat. Awesome. You tend to uh, take decisions for a long time. You want to give someone a bit of a, a run. So uh, can we expect Yasi to bat in number three again? In time? It depends very much on the makeup of the team. Um, we were hoping Sakib could bowl a few overs here. Um, it's, it's something I need to think about going forward because the, the, the nature of the wicket in Murapur is, is, is different. Um, 
So we need to get an understanding what the wicket's going to be like uh, before we make a decision there. But like you say, I don't like chopping and changing that much. I like to be fair to players. Um, so at the moment, the middle order pretty much jammed up with Saki, Mushfik, Litten. Um, so wherever he plays, he's got to make use of his opportunity because sometimes you don't bat in the position you want to bat in, but you've got to make it count. Saki, um, uh, sorry, one, one more. It's about Shanto. He scored two runs today. Um, like you also him and, and the manager. Yeah, look, I'm disappointed with the way he got out. Um, in the day, 60s are not going to win you test matches, and, and you can anybody can get a first baller. That's part of test match batting. Any opening batter can get a first baller. That's the nature of the game. So I'm probably more disappointed with the way he got out at 60 than the way he got out for first ball. So he's missed a good opportunity there to get a big score um, and, and really nail down a spot, which is disappointing and it's always for me it's it's the manner of dismissal anybody can get out but it's the way you get out that that can tell a story a little bit sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm very disappointed um, I'm actually and I said to the guys like I was actually a little bit heartbroken off the first thing because I know they're putting in the effort and the guys are trying hard Everdot's working extremely hard in his fielding but when it comes to the middle they then make a mistake he takes all his catches in practice he's putting in extra catching ball comes to him he drops it so they're putting in the effort but they're just not executing in the pressure moments in the game and that's the frustrating thing for me as a, as a coach and I'm sure for the players as well um, so I am very disappointed with the way we've we've unraveled in these five days. So some good character yesterday with a bat, which is pleasing to see. But it's a good wicket um, and should never be bowled off for 150 on day two. Thanks. We talked about poor decisions with the bat. Uh, what's your take on this? Yeah, look, uh, I've, I've had a chat a little bit to, to Yasser, to Rabi, obviously got a, a reasonably good ball but at international cricket you've got to find a way to to defend against those balls because you've got to expect the ball to either get to LBW or spin past your bat so he's got some work to do there I was pretty disappointed with Lydon's dismissal um, particularly the timing of it six minutes to go before before tea time where things were going pretty and and he's such a good player and I'm sure he'd be disappointed with that dismissal as well because I can't see Virat or Joe Root or Steve Smith or Marnus giving their wicket away in that sort of mode six minutes before T and Litton's that good for us is I really think he's such a good player that he'd be disappointed and I'm disappointed with the way he got out yesterday. Coach, uh, <coughs> you said that you wanted Swan to give for a long time and for in case. But uh, thinking about our team combination, do we really have that luxury to play another wicketkeeper? It's tricky when Sakib can't bowl. That's that's the challenge. If Sakib's bowling, then it's it's easier to do, I suppose. Um, look, someone's done really well with the bat. Um, he's got no runs this game, and that's the that's always the challenge in Bangladesh. Is you don't get runs today, you must be dropped. But you forget about the game before that, what the player did, or so you just need to take a step back and absorb it and think about it a little bit more. But just one test to go in the West Indies, I think he got 50 and 50. So um, he'd be disappointed with his dismissal, particularly yesterday. But not to make too emotional decision. We've still got a couple of days before the next test match. What was your plan at moment about you picking the squad in one of the places he scores runs? What was your plan at Yeah, look, it's a, I mean, Momino's got 10 of his 11 unders at this particular venue. Um, but Momino will be the first one to admit that the last year or so, domestically and internationally, hasn't got the runs that he needs to get. Um, but he's too good a player to not have around. Um, so I think it was important for him to still be part of the squad. You cannot lose a player of Momino's quality because he's the one player that's got more than 10 test unders for Bangladesh. So good to still have him around the squad. And will definitely be considered for the for the second test match. Um, but like a lot of other players, Momino is also a guy that 
hasn't got enough runs over the last year. There's no doubt about it, whether it's domestically, whether it's for the A-side, whether it's for Bangladesh. He hasn't got enough runs. He's one of a few guys that haven't. But what is the problem really? What do you think he's done? What problem is that? Momiro. It's like everyone else, it's confidence. It's confidence and constant scrutiny and he's probably trying too hard now. He's probably listening to a lot of opinions, trying a lot of things and he needs to go back and find his way of getting runs because he knows how to get runs. Um, but it's confidence and pressure. Um, it's, a, it's a tough place international batting. Some of the best players in the world have gone through slumps like that but managed to find a way through it and he's got to find a way through it no, because I know he's a quality player. How do you evaluate uh, Sakit's dedication in a test match? How do I evaluate his dedication? Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a tricky question. Um, it's a good question. Look, when, he, when, he's, when he's in the contest, like you saw today, he's got pride in performance. So he comes across very laid back, and, but when he's in the contest, he gives 100%. Um, when you look at it from the outside, you can maybe look at him and think, oh, does he really care? But I know in, the, in his performances and with, with champion players, they have got a lot of pride in performances. So Sakib doesn't want to be embarrassed there when he's batting or when he's bowling. He's competing 100%. Um, so in terms of his own individual game, there are no question marks with his desire to play and perform. Another question I read, Sakib, uh, doesn't want to play this cricket as much as uh, other formats. Uh, is it just a myth or... Uh, Please. That you need to ask Sakib. I can't comment on what he wants and what he doesn't want. Last two questions. Uh, just a bit of a follow-up to what he asked uh, in the first question. So, uh, with so much decision-making uh, with Diaz and other things, uh, can he actually afford a captain not to be close and then leave somewhere and be part of the decisions? Is that also <laughs> No, look, captain? I mean, the captain's got to trust his bowler and trust his wicket-keeper. He's going to... He's got, to, he's got to trust their judgment. You can't expect the captain to n know and understand absolutely everything that's working. Um, so I've got no issue with that. He's, he's got to trust the judgment of the keeper and the guy that's uh, delivering the ball and have faith in, in their decision making. Last question. Sir, Manoj Shomsu, Hi, sir. Uh, right. Hi. This thing has been an area of concern for Bangladesh, like across the So how do you go with that? Are there some certain things which you are doing for that? Say that again, that question again, sir? Brisbane has been an area of Brisbane. Brisbane. Like across formats, we have seen that. So, is there something going on regarding how to tackle that and how to go with that? Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one because from the time I got to Bangladesh, I've been trying to encourage leg spin, particularly in the shorter formats of the game. And I've noticed once again in the BPL that both wrist spinners that we're looking at possibly haven't been bought in the BPL. So, that's a little bit concerning for me. Um, Bangladesh's bread and butter has always been left arm spin and a batsman who can bowl off spin and in this, particularly in the shorter formats and particularly on flatter wickets um, you need to find somebody who can have uh, who can bowl wrist spin the biggest challenge is that they've never had a role model as a wrist spinner India have had wrist spinners, Pakistan have had wrist spinners Australia have had wrist spinners, Bangladesh haven't had a great wrist spinner that other players try and emulate so um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done with identifying that guy and encouraging him and selecting him in formats and uh, competitions below the national side and keep picking him and, and developing that play because at the moment there are very few around. We tried Piplop and he's a batsman who can bowl leg spin and has done well in T20 cricket for Bangladesh but doesn't get bored in the BPL so it's, it's a tricky one for us. It's hard to pick a guy for the national team when he's not getting picked in domestic teams. We've done it before, but it's hard to continuously do it. For, for batters as well, like how to prepare for the challenges? Like only if there any Absolutely. Then we've got one or two guys who bowl in the net, so that's who bowl a little bit of wrist spin. But it's not Kuldeep's wrist spin, and it's, uh, it's not Rashid Khan's leg spin. Um, so they're not used to playing that quality week in, week out, which is also a challenge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.